All right, guys, welcome back to another free training for real estate school provided by yours truly, David Dodge. Today, we're gonna be talking about 50 plus ways to go about finding motivated sellers. How so easy, we close fast and any time that works for you. Your house don't need it, we'll throw cash it so fast, don't know what to do. Wanted or care to keep it, no declutter repair. All right, guys, welcome back to another free training for real estate school provided by yours truly, David Dodge. Today, we're going to be talking about 50 plus ways to go about finding motivated sellers. When we are in the real estate investing business, doesn't matter what exit strategy, right? It doesn't matter for wholesaling, if we are trying to fix and flip or buy rentals for our rental portfolio, we still need to, to find motivated sellers so we can get good deals to acquire those properties, right? We make our money when we buy, we get paid when we sell. So regardless of when that sale may be, the money is really made when we buy deals in the beginning. And in fact, this is one of the things that I teach every student that I work with right away. And the first, you know, couple sessions of working with me is, is, you know, we make our money in this business when we buy deals. So if we're not buying deals, we're not going to make money in this business, right? Or it's going to take a lot of time, a long time to make money. But if we buy a property at 50 cents on the dollar, 50 or 60 cents on the dollar, you know, we can make a lot of money when we sell it later, but we can also make a lot of money when we sell it today. So again, it doesn't matter if you're wholesaling or looking for fix and flips or whatever, you make your money when you buy. So how do you make your money when you buy? Well, you find sellers that have problems, that have a high level of motivation, and then you go solve problems for those people. You offer convenience to those people in exchange for discounts. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about 50 plus ways to go about finding motivated sellers. All right, I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to keep an eye on the chat. If you guys have any questions while I'm talking, feel free to unmute yourself and just ask questions in real time on this particular training because um, there's a lot of things that we're going to go through. And I have a mind map and it's awesome. This is really, really cool. So I'm going to share my screen and you can actually find the training over here inside of real estate school. If you guys are not, if you're watching this replay, for example, on YouTube or Facebook, and you're not in real estate school, real estate school is amazing. Uh, there'll be a link below this video. Uh, we already have a community of 580 individuals. It's growing fast. If you go into the classroom and then you go into the free wholesaling course and then the additional resources, you can see there's six different modules in that course. And then in the additional resources, there's a link to 50 plus ways to find motivated sellers. And this link right here will take you to a mind map. And this mind map is really what we're going to be talking about in today's training. But this video will be valuable because it will accompany this mind map. Um, for those that don't really understand or, or really know, you know, what, what this all means, right? So what I have here is I have 50 plus ways to find off market deals. And some of these ways even have little sub bullets and whatnot. So, you know, to be honest, there, there's a lot of different ways that we can go about finding motivated sellers, a lot of ways, right? But these ways right here are some of the best ways. And I personally have used most of these strategies and most of these ways and scenarios to go about finding deals from motivated sellers to win properties, to either wholesale, to fix and flip, to add as rentals, whatever. Again, we make our money when we buy. So let's get started, right? 50 plus ways. Number one is wholesalers. Now, if you are a wholesaler, probably not the best strategy because you know, you're going to have to get a really good deal from that wholesaler to then turn around and wholesale the property. Doesn't mean you can't find deals from wholesalers, though. In fact, I've probably done 40 or 50 deals where a wholesaler's brought me a property and I've found a buyer higher than they were asking, right? So you can definitely joint venture with other wholesalers, help them sell their deals, and even mark their deals up. Uh, but again, without having a buyer's list and know a lot of investors, that might not be the best strategy. But the great thing about this strategy is, let's say that you're not really interested in being a wholesaler. You just want to buy fix and flips or buy rentals. Well, having a good a couple of wholesalers in your back pocket to constantly be bringing and feeding you discounted properties is a huge advantage to anybody that's you know looking to just find discounted properties, excuse me, and doesn't necessarily want to go about 
you know, uh, putting all the time and effort into the marketing and the calling and the appointments and the follow-ups and the, and the systems and all the processes that are involved with the wholesaling business. Maybe they just want to be fed deals on a silver platter. Well, wholesalers is a great option for that. In fact, I buy probably about, oh, I don't know, 20 to 30% of the properties that I acquire every single day or every single week from other wholesalers in my market. So again, don't discount those. All right, direct mail is a great way. Whenever we're sending direct mail, we're often sending mail to lists of sellers that have a presumed level of motivation, right? We're not just gonna send mail blindly. That would be stupid. We're definitely gonna be sending mail to vacant and absentee owners. Those are the top two on my list. And that's essentially gonna make up about 75% of the motivated sellers that we come across. Um, we're also gonna send to high equity. People that recently had a divorce, people that are having that dealt with death recently via probate, uh, people that are having to deal with evictions, right? Those are those landlords, you know, maybe tired of landlording. We're going to send mail to tax delinquents. We're going to send mail to pre foreclosure. And in fact, today, um, after this training, I'm going to go send some mail to some of the probate leads. My team has been scraping probate leads. We have a ton of these leads right here just from the last three months for six different counties, as you can see here. So we're going to send some mail to all these leads. And then as we, um, you know, every week we're going to go in and we're going to scrape that week's worth of data and then start sending this stuff in real time. I haven't been sending mail to them recently, but we're back at it. So sending direct mail can be a very, very awesome way to get deals. I've gotten hundreds of deals over the years from direct mail. It's very, very easy to, to, to do. Um, every door direct mail is another method. And this is basically done via USPS. And you can essentially select a driver's route or a mail carrier's route. And for a whole lot cheaper than sending mail to every door on that address, you can have the mail carrier deliver a postcard or a letter. Typically, it's a postcard or an oversized postcard to every door on their route. So again, you can learn more about that at USPS.com. Um, but every door direct mail can be a really great area of marketing, a type of marketing, assuming you want to target a neighborhood or a zip code or, you know, a particular area of town, you can just find drivers that, you know, make up a good portion of that via route, via the route, and you can have them just deliver mail to everybody on their route. Bandit signs can be very, very, very helpful. Um, great place to buy them is signsonthecheap.com. It's typically where I buy mine, but there's lots of places online. You might be able to find them cheaper elsewhere, but signsonthecheap.com is pretty cheap. Um, basically, we, they're, the, they're the houses that just say we buy houses and uh, you can get them pre-printed, single-sided, double-sided, or even get them blank and, and write on them yourself. Um, it's always a good idea to use a Google voice number or a specific phone number for that, uh, just so you're able to track it. But Bandit Signs can be a really, really great, um, great way to get calls for motivated sellers. Bandit Sign on Wheels. Um, I don't even think I still have this website. I need to take that down. I, I, I remember I got rid of that. But Bandit Sign on Wheels is basically just those stickers that go on the back of people's windshields of their cars. Um, and we even have magnets that we put on our cars. And we still use the magnets. And the Bandit Sign on Wheels, uh, we, have, we have a truck right now that has, that has the, the window in the back of it. And at one point, my business partner had 70 cars on the road that had these signs. And if they were able to generate a lead for us, we'd give them 500 to a thousand bucks. So bandit sign on wheels can be a great, a great method to, um, to market as well. Yard signs. So whenever we own a property, let's say we buy something to rehab, we're going to put a, we buy houses sign in the yard. So anybody that's driving around that neighborhood or across that street, if it's in a busy area, they're going to see that we're looking to buy some more houses, um, cold calling and dialers, right? Mojo sells is one. Um, I really like batch dialer as well. So batch dialer is what I'm currently using. Um, it doesn't, it does require skip tracing because you need to get the phone numbers, but you know, you can do that with batch leads, which is awesome. So you get for sale by owner, you know, all the, all the, the, um, people on Craigslist or, or Zillow, you can get their information. Um, or you can just go pull those lists, those vacants, those absentees, those probates, those pre foreclosures, so on and so forth. Um, so, you know, cold calling is pretty straightforward. Joint venturing and investor partnering. So this is kind of what I was mentioning about earlier when I was talking about wholesalers, right? But essentially, we're just going to help other investors. We're going to joint venture with them or we're going to partner with them to help them sell their deals. All right. Um, I have a website called letscowholesale.com 
which essentially just forwards over to a Podio web form. And I, whenever I go to RIA's, I'll show you what the site looks like. Whenever I go to RIA's, I give people this address, let's co-wholesale.com. I actually have business cards that say it and they can put their information in about their deal. And then I get a notification and then I can help them sell their deal. And I've probably done this joint venturing with other investors 50 times, 70 times, a ton of times to help other people in my market sell their deals because I have a decent buyer's list because I've been in my market for eight years. So don't, don't underestimate the power of the joint venture. Uh, driving for dollars, one of my favorite methods to get, to get deals. I've done six-figure driving for dollar deals before, six-figure deals. So driving for dollars can be a great approach to finding motivated sellers. And you just get in your car and you drive around and you use apps. My favorite app um, for driving for dollars is Deal Machine, but I know Batch Leads also has the capability. Um, you can do it with um, PropStream, and there's some other, other ones out there too, but Deal Machine's got the best UI, and uh, Batch Leads is really, really good too, like both of those. So again, keep that in mind if you're going to want to drive for dollars, but driving for dollars is an excellent way. In fact, my partner was driving for dollars yesterday and added 74 leads to the system just yesterday from properties that he was driving around that looked like they needed to work. So anything that need, that looks like it, it needs some work, you can drive around and you can add those to the list. All right, friends and family, and I would even go as far as say as acquaintances on this next one here. You know, if, you're, if your business is a secret, nobody's gonna send you leads. So you gotta let your friends, your family, your acquaintances, your network know that you're a real estate investor and that you're looking to buy houses. And if the houses need a bunch of work, that's great. Because that's the, typically the kind of house that we're buying. So I'm looking for people that need to sell their house. I'm not looking for people that want to sell their house specifically. I'm looking for people that need to sell. That's how I'm getting a big, big discount. So friends, family, acquaintances, don't keep your business a secret. Make posts on social media once a week. Remind everybody. All right. I made posts on social media once a week for four years. And now I'm making posts on social media every two to three weeks. So in the beginning, every single week, make a post. If you have not made a post and you are, are new to real estate investing, first thing you can do right away for free is go make a post that says, hey, I buy houses in, insert your city. Do you or anybody you know have a house they need to sell? Call me or DM me. I mean, you do that weekly. If people don't know about your business, they're not going to bring you deals, right? I get somebody probably once a month, bring me a deal from a friend, a family, an acquaintance. And it's because I'm just posting on Facebook. Guys, this isn't hard. Just make the damn posts, right? Don't forget to do that. All right, those people, your friends, your family, your acquaintances are essentially your bird dogs. That's what a bird dog is. These are property finders. They can be other people. They can be dog walkers, mail carriers, trash and recycle workers, firemen, utility company workers, UPS or FedEx drivers, right? I give my mail carrier a $20 gas card probably three or four times a year, right? Not because I'm paying them or for, me, for delivering my mail. It's because when I give them that gas card, I also give them three or four business cards. And I say, hey, help me find a property to buy in the area and I will give you a $500 bonus. Oh, and by the way, thank you for your help and your services. Here's 20 bucks. And I've gotten leads from FedEx drivers. I've gotten leads from mail carriers, right? So you can make these people your bird dogs. It's essentially just letting people know what business you're in and telling them that you're going to, you're going to incentivize them in the event that they can help you find a deal, all right? Go to your RIA clubs. There's going to be other investors there trying to unload properties, right? They may, they may charge you a wholesale fee, but they can still find you deals. Again, if you're looking to fix and flip and or buy rentals. Um, you can use classified and directory sites, right? You can use Angie's List, Craigslist, Yelp, Yellow Pages, eBay Classifieds, um, essential, you know, et cetera, et cetera, to find people that may have a property listed for sale. Or you can go in there and you can just post that you are an investor and you're looking to buy some deals and that you are a cash buyer, all right? Post ads on social media. I just talked about this, guys. It's free to do so, all right? You don't even need to make these posts sponsored, but if you wanna boost them, not a bad idea, right? More eyeballs on the posts. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, et cetera. 
any social media platform you use, make a post, guys. All right, you have divorce attorneys as well as divorce records, which you can pull with batch leads or prop stream. You have eviction attorneys that you can market to. And you can actually go pull those records at your local county record office. All right. I get leads from divorce attorneys. I get leads from eviction attorneys. I even get leads from probate attorneys. All right. So you can go pull divorce, eviction, and probate. But another, and that's really more of a reactive approach to marketing. You can take the proactive mar approach to marketing by networking with divorce attorneys, eviction attorneys, or probate attorneys, and or just sending mail to them. You know, if there's 20 or 30 eviction attorneys in town, hand write 20 letters that just says, hey, if you know of any of your clients that need to sell a property, let me know. And if I buy any of them, I'll pay you 250 bucks or 500 bucks. Price that into your offer. No big deal, right? But if they don't know about you, just like your friends and your family and your acquaintances, they're not going to bring you leads. So market directly to these people and then market directly to their clients. All right. Don't just send one letter, send two or three, or maybe try to get these people on the phone or drop into their offices as well. These are definitely good ways for them to get to know you. All right, moving on, door knocking and post-it notes. You got the door hangers, you got the post-it notes. Those can be great things. Those typically say, um, you know, hey, I'm looking, to, I'm looking to buy your house, call me, or, or just, hey, I need to talk to you, call me, right? Something simple, don't overthink it. Um, estate sales. I love getting leads from my estate sale friends, right? I network with estate sale companies. I send letters to estate sale companies three or four times a year to remind them that I'm in business still. And if they bring me leads that I will pay them. Why do people hire estate sale companies? Because they need to clean a house out before they sell it. They're going to sell the house most of the time after the estate sale. What better way to get motivated seller leads directly from the estate sale folks? right? So network with these people. When I first started out in this business, I called every estate sale person in my town and offered to buy them lunch. Only five or six of them said, okay, that sounds like a great thing. Let's do it. But I got me five or six lunch dates with other people that are in real estate, helping people sell stuff. And I get leads from all of them all the time. And I constantly follow up with them every four to six months and remind them that I'm still in business. And you know, if I haven't gotten any deals from them recently, I'll offer to buy them lunch again, right? You got to network. You can't just send one postcard and expect to get deals. You got to actually truly build relationships with these people, right? So all the attorneys, all the state sale folks build relationships with these people, right? Once you have yourself a bunch of good relationships, you don't even have to necessarily have a bunch of paid advertising. These people can bring you deals, but you have to make sure that they continuously know what business that you're in so they can bring you deals. Stella has a comment here. It says, I'm stuck on which account I should be posting. I have two accounts, a personal and a business. Do you have only one account? It doesn't matter. Post on both. They're free to post on both. On your personal account, you can't boost your posts on Facebook, but on your business account, you can. So there's pros and cons to both of those, but it doesn't cost you a dollar to post on either one of those, Stella. So post them on both, right? All right, neighborhood associations, right? You can call your local HOAs all around town, find out who the HOA presidents are, call them up. Usually there's a way to find them online and ask them if there's anybody that hasn't paid their HOAs in six months or 12 months or two years. They're going to typically be pretty upset with those people. They're going to want them out of their neighborhood. And whenever you go buy the property from that person, the HOAs are going to get caught up. So it's a win-win. And they'll often give you the name and the phone number or the address of the people that owe them money. So HOAs can be a really, really great resource. Bank take backs, all right? These are going to be the non-performing asset departments within a bank. So call a bank, ask them if, they, if you can talk to the non-performing asset department. They're going to have properties. Sometimes they auction those properties off. Other times they just list them. And sometimes you can get in and you can make offers on them before they get listed. Or at a minimum, you can be notified when they're listed so you can make your offer through the agent. These are basically houses that banks take back in foreclosures, right? They have to do something with them. Banks aren't in the business of keeping, fixing, or renting houses. They sell them, right? They're in the business of collecting money and lending that money. You got mass media advertising. Now, this is obviously going to be the most expensive type of marketing, but if you don't have a ton of time and you want to have a true business in a, in a big business, 
these are great options. You can you can get advertisements in newspapers, billboards, radio, television. Um, all of these are great ways. And you know, just because you're going to be using one of these methods doesn't mean you have to spend ten thousand a month. I know people spending five hundred to a thousand dollars a month on billboards, and they have multiple billboards. I know people spending three hundred dollars a month on radio ads in a small small town. Now, obviously, you're not going to get an ad played every hour at three hundred dollars a month but you might get two or three ads played a day, right? So you don't have to necessarily have tens of thousands of dollars to use mass media. In bigger markets, it's gonna cost more. I mean, it depends on the, on the size of the audience, right? So just keep that in mind. You also have local business advertising, right? You can, you can do shopping carts at grocery stores. You can do DMVs. DMVs now have TVs with ads on. You can advertise at car dealerships, right? Leave business cards behind whenever you go to restaurants and they have the tack boards near the restrooms. All right. All the local businesses have an opportunity to advertise with bus and bus stops, right? So the sides of the bus stops, the bus stops themselves, bus stations, or even the buses. Sometimes you can get advertising on the side of a bus. I know a lot of the personal injury attorneys in my town use the buses because they're basically mobile billboards. They're the same size as a billboard. Think about a bus, right? And they're driving around town all day, every day. So get on the side of some buses. That can be a great way to get your name out there. Park benches. You know, you can typically get advertisement on a park bench for anywhere from $20 to $40 a month. So it's really, really cheap. So I know some people will go and they'll do 20, 30, 40, 50 park benches at a time. And they'll run campaigns for four to six months or longer. All right. So you're going to pay, but you're going to get your, you're going to get your number out there and get your website out there and get your business name out there. You got money mailers and coupon books, all right? Audience is going to vary with each of these and so will the price, depends on the market. But those are going to be a great way to, to get mail sent to people, you know, in bulk for much, much cheaper. You might be able to hit a door for three or four cents versus 40 cents or 50 cents, right? So money mailers can be a great way to get your, your name out there. Overlooked properties that fall out of contract, um, you know, contract, contact the agents of pending properties and, and make sure that they're going to close. And if they don't tell them that you're interested in buying the property, you can contact um, the sellers of those same pending properties. I like to build relationships with title companies. Sometimes my title company will call me and they'll say, hey, Dave, somebody's here to sell a property and a buyer didn't show up and they're ducking us and we haven't talked to them for two weeks. And we told the seller that we weren't able to get a hold of the buyer but they still wanted to come to closing and now they're just sitting there. No one's going to be here to buy the property. Oh, and by the way, their name is Tom and here's their address and here's their phone number. Great. I'll call Tom and tell him that I'm interested in buying his house. Probably can't pay him with that other buyer that didn't show up is going to pay him, but I can at least make an offer. You can host your own meetup group. If there's not a meetup group in your town, start one. If there are meetups in your town already, so what? You can start one, right? These are essentially called RIAs. Um, re real estate investment associations, right? So you can go to meetup.com and you can start it, start it. And most RIAs meet once a month. And most of them I know don't even meet in December. So there's 11 meetings a year. I think we can all manage 11 meetings a year. Some of these meetup groups are just coffee with five to 10 people at a restaurant once a month. Other groups I go to are 300 plus people that get together in a big, comp you know, in a big event space. So you can start small and you can scale your way up. But if nobody knows what business you're in, how are they going to bring you leads? This is just another way to, to just build more relationships with all people that are involved in real estate and real estate investing. All right, next we have property management companies. You can call property managers and property management companies and you can ask them if they have any clients that have any vacant houses that don't have the money to fix them up. It happens all the time. In fact, the very first Two properties that I wholesaled, maybe even three, came from property management companies. So you call property management companies and you say, hey, I'm an investor. I'm looking to buy some properties. Do you have any distressed property owners or distressed properties? Again, property owners that can't afford to fix them up once their tenant trashes them. All right. That can be very valuable. But again, you have to call those companies and ask them and, and build relationships with them. Title companies, I kind of mentioned that down here below on overlooked properties that fall out of contract, but title companies can be a great resource to let you know of deals that fall through, all right? So you want to network with your title companies and you want to also tell them when you're in there, closing your own deals, 
to let you know of any deal that falls apart because of a buyer backing out, right? Or maybe even title issues. And then you can go work on those title issues. Um, tradesmen and inspectors, right? You got professional contractors, handyman, maintenance workers, city or building inspectors, code enforcement agents, any of your current GCs. I got a text today from my GC saying he has a buddy who has a house that he wants to sell and it needs a bunch of work. And I was the first person that came to mind. Wow, I wonder why. Because I'm making posts online all the time and I'm hiring him to go fix up properties all the time. So he knows me. That's why he brought me these leads. The best leads in this business are the free ones, right? And, and I say free, meaning I didn't have to spend money in the beginning. I may still kick my GC three or $400 as a thank you for bringing me the lead after the fact, but it's going to be priced into the deal. So again, you got to get out there. You got to network, right? You got to get your name out there. Quit keeping your business a secret, guys. You've heard me say this five times already on this call. If your business is a secret, you're not going to get free leads, all right? Next will be your local Facebook groups. There's, there's a lot of different ways in, on here. There's the buy, sell, trade groups. You can find other wholesalers posting in local real estate groups and investor groups. There's for sale by owner groups, which is also now probably more so like Facebook marketplace. And then you can also find landlord groups where people will post, a, you know, it's typically packages of properties. So Facebook groups can be a really, really great place, not only to network, um, but also to find motivated sellers or wholesalers that have motivated sellers. Next, you have LinkedIn groups, right? Same as above as the Facebook groups. There's automated triggers, right? So there's a couple different things that you can do. There's a service out there called IFTTT. And what that means is if this, then that. And really what it does is it allows you to create triggers. So I can go in and I can say, hey, Craigslist, if somebody posts a property for sale in this zip code, do this. And this might be to send me an email notifying me of the new post, which is essentially an automated trigger. So you can use automated triggers to keep you in the loop about any new property that's hitting the market on Craigslist or Zillow that might be a for sale by owner or even for rent. Don't discount calling landlords that are marketing properties for rent and saying, hey, I know I noticed that you have this property listed for rent, but would you have any interest in selling it? Excuse me. Oftentimes people don't think they can sell a property and that's why they rent it. But if you can approach them and make them an offer, they may consider selling it versus dealing with the tenants and the headache of rent, renting it. So automated triggers can be a great way. Hard money lenders, right? Sometimes hard money lenders have to take back properties when they lend to people. Other times hard money lenders may lend to a borrower and the borrower runs out of money. And they don't have the money to fix it up and they have to exit the deal as the only way to pay the lender back. So network with hard money lenders and you can meet a lot of hard money lenders at your local meetup groups or RIA meetings. Again, if go to the go to all of them, maybe even considering starting your own, especially if there isn't any in your neighborhood already. Professional services. Guys, this list could be a mile long. Here's just a couple of them, right? These people are all involved with real estate typically. Appraisers, bankers, accountants, insurance agents. Come on, every property's got insurance on if there's a loan. So, you know, sometimes your insurance agent might know people that are, you know, have rental properties that are vacant or just properties that in general that they need to sell. All of these things. I've gotten um, leads from most of the people on this list right here. But again, this list could be a mile long. Anybody that's in real estate, survey companies, you name it, right? These are professional services. They can bring you free leads, assuming they know what business you're in. So quit keeping your business a secret, guys. This is really the, the name of the training today. It's not 50 plus ways to find deals. It's quit keeping your business a secret. Tell everybody you know what business you're in including paid marketing to reach people via postcards, mass media, direct mail, door knocking, whatever. Get out there and tell everybody that you're looking to buy distressed properties. It's the only way you're going to start getting leads. You got to pay for the marketing or spend time doing the networking. It's one or the other. So one of the first things I typically ask new students is, what's your marketing budget? And I break it into two parts. Time and money. How much time are you going to commit? How much money are you going to commit? And the great thing is, is that you don't have to have a ton of money 
you know, typically you're going to need at least 500 bucks a month to, to pay for systems and softwares and stuff like that. But that's probably the minimum that you need, but then you're going to need to have two or three hours a day or more to, to, to get out there and do the networking. If you don't have two or three hours a day, that's fine. You're going to need to have a money monetary budget just to do some sort of marketing, right? So I typically tell people 500 in two to three hours, or let's say you maybe only have two to three hours every other day or every three days, well, then you're going to need to have $1,500 or $2,000 a month in marketing. Again, nobody's going to call you if they don't know you can help them. So you got to get your name out there. Restoration companies, fire, smoke, water. That sounds like distress all day to me. Um, you can find local companies. You can even network with the national companies. Pop in, show up at their office, give them a business card, offer to bring them some coffee or buy them lunch, right? Give them an incentive to want to call you. Don't just say, oh, I buy houses, bring me leads. If you came up and if you came up to make you know met me on the street and gave me a business card and said I buy houses, you know send me some leads, I would probably throw that card away. I have no incentive to call you. So make sure you incentivize all of the people that you're networking with. Hey, bring me a deal and I'll pay you five hundred bucks. Oh, really? Okay, now I'm going to save that business card. At a minimum, I'm going to put it in my phone. So make sure these people have an incentive. Make sure that they don't forget you. Don't just pop in once. Make it a routine to network with people and build relationships. I can't stress this enough. Networking only gets you so far. But really what networking does is it gives you the opportunity to go build deep relationships, long lasting relationships. And those relationships are the ones that are going to send you free leads, not the ones that you just meet randomly one time. Probably not going to get leads from those people. Maybe, but it's not likely. All right. Moving on, pre-foreclosure lists. You can door knock them, send letters, skip trace, call, text, email. Foreclosure auctions. You're going to need cash to buy these, but there are motivated sellers. You know, typically banks, they're motivated to sell all the time. You got tax auctions. Again, you're going to need cash. You have to buy the property the same day you make the offer. Um, but these are often going to be done at the courthouse. Pre and post tax, uh, pre and post tax auctions. Pre is you can call them whenever before, like as you see a property going for auction and you can call the seller and buy the property before it hits the auction. So you can actually get auction properties before they go to auction by just buying them directly from the previous or the current owner and paying off their mortgage, right? You can do that all the way up to the day of the auction. Or you can help the sellers redeem their past due taxes and or mortgage payments and then buy it after the auction, but at least get it caught up to where it stops the auction. So you either have to pay off the loan or catch the loan up in order to get rid of the auction. Google search for open record requests. Um, that, that can be a great way to, um, to find sellers that just have clouded titles. Um, you can do YouTube commercials. Now, this really goes for any social media, right? You can create ads on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. YouTube, YouTube would be video commercials versus just versus just you know stills. But you can use those same videos on YouTube as all the other social media platforms. And if you want to do a paid, you know, paid post or ads, the great thing about uh, social media ads is you can target very, very, very specifically. So you know you can only run ads in a certain city, zip code, municipality, county, and you can make sure that the people that you're running ads to or have a high likelihood of needing to sell a property, right? So that can be a great way. Um, you can do a website and then SEO to that website. You can do blogs, landing pages, on on-site SEO, keywords, optimization to get traffic to your website so they fill out a form or they call you. Once you have yourself a nice website, you can do pay-per-click marketing. You can do this on all social platforms as well as Google. All right, this is some of the best ways to get highly, highly motivated sellers. It's gonna, you're gonna pay. I mean, we typically pay about 150 bucks a click and up to $300 for a single lead on Google AdWords, but we typically only need 10 leads to get a deal, right? So, I mean, we're typically paying about 2,500 bucks to get a deal, but the average deal we do makes us 10 grand, right? So to me, it's just like, all right, Let's spend the 2,500 to go make the 10. Why wouldn't we want to do that? But again, you're going to pay for the pay-per-click. It's That's in the name, pay-per-click. Once people click on your website, you're going to want to retarget them. 
So if they don't fill out a form or call your number, you can retarget them and you can essentially follow them around the web and, and do still banners to remind them that they were on your website recently and, um, and that, you're, that you're here to help them. Social media bots, not necessarily a huge thing nowadays, but a couple of years ago, this was really popular. Um, not even going to dive down that rabbit hole. There's, they still exist. Um, and essentially they can make posts for you or they can go scrape social media sites and find people that have had properties for sale. The stunning open house strategy is another great method here, guys. This is whenever you are finishing up a rehab, tip specifically, right? You rehab the property, it's beautiful. You can invite all the neighbors, the local agents in town, um, any other local investors to your open house. And you can have, you know, cookies or sandwiches, sodas, bottles of water, basically just some small treats to, you know, to, to get them to come. Um, but really while they're there, you're networking with them. You're showing them the quality of the work that you've done. And we've used the stunning open house strategy several times with neighbors specifically to buy more properties on the street, right? So we have a property that we bought. It was completely derelict and distressed, needs a ton of work. We buy it, we fix it up. We invite the neighbors over and they say, oh man, I can't believe this place looks like this does now. I mean, it was bad. And then we say, yeah, we love buying houses that need work. Let us know when you want to sell yours. And we give them a business card and a magnet to put on their fridge. And whenever they're ready to sell, oftentimes six months to two years later, they call you and then you got yourself another deal. So again, this is really much more specific to rehabbers, um, but it's a great, great strategy. We used it several times to buy properties. Send Christmas cards to all your contacts. The full contact app is a great way to keep track of all your contacts. There's lots of contact apps out there. But why do we want to send Christmas cards? We want to send Christmas cards because it's the least we can do to maintain relationships. Right? If you get a Christmas card from somebody, that typically means that they care about you. Right? If they're going to go take a picture of their family or their pet, you know, and they're going to send it to you, you're you're essentially in their in their top circle, right? They're paying money to welcome you or to give you a, send you a merry christmas and a happy holiday. Doesn't mean you can't send Christmas cards to all your business contacts. And it's a really really cost-effective way cuz you only got to do it in December. Um, to remind them that you're still in business. Guys, don't keep your business a secret. And that's the sixth or seventh time I've said it now. It's that important though. I'm gonna probably say it again. All right, Xmas cards. We talked about that. Always be networking and following up. Go to, go to business networking events. Go to RIAs. Go to the B&Is, right? Those are like at six o'clock in the morning. Um, follow up with the most important part of the business, right? It, it is the most important part of the business. Follow up with sellers, follow up with everyone, follow up with, you know, all your contacts, follow up with all of your networking individuals, remind them that you are still here, that you are still interested in incentivizing them to bring you leads. Very, very, very important. The average deal we do requires four to six months of follow-up, four to six months. So also on this topic here, don't just call somebody once or twice, keep calling the average deal we do usually has 15 touches or more, meaning that we've called, text, emailed 15 different times before we got them to sign a contract with us. Oftentimes, it's 40 or 50 times. All right? You got to follow up. Most people aren't going to want to sell you their property at a discount the first day you talk to them. You have to build rapport, make friends, and keep following up. All right? I would say one in 20 deals we're able to get under contract within a week. The other 19 require lots and lots of follow-up. So do not discount the follow-up. All right, you can mass text blast. I don't like doing voicemail drops, um, but that is an option to your existing leads, or you can even use texting and calling on new leads to prospect. And then of course, Facebook Marketplace. We kind of already talked about that a little bit earlier uh, when we talked about Facebook and the groups and whatnot. But Facebook Marketplace is similar to Craigslist and Zillow, where people will post properties for sale by owner or for rent. And again, do not discount the properties that are marked for rent, because sometimes the sellers might not realize that they have the option of selling that property. Um, they might just not know about it. All right. 
So guys, that's a wrap. That's 50 plus ways. And here's the deal. There's probably another hundred ways that I could add to this list, <clears throat> but I don't want to create a bunch of analysis paralysis and I don't want to overwhelm you guys. 50 is plenty. Okay. So here's the deal. Here's the takeaway. Don't try to go implement 50 things. That's foolish because nothing's going to get done. What I would suggest you do is find two or three or four at the most things on this list and go and hit those hard. Oh, I missed nursing homes. I think I just saw it, but I might have. Oh, I, I missed a couple. Nursing home staff, pre-foreclosure lists, foreclosure auctions. I think I missed those three right there when I was doing this earlier. But yeah, don't, don't try to go do all of this at once. Pick three or four or even one or two and go start attacking that. And then once you have a good grasp, like for instance, let's say the first thing you want to do is go network with all the estate sale companies. Guys, call and text and email every company. Try to get them to come to meet you, to meet you somewhere. Buy them coffee, buy them lunch, whatever. Once you've reached out to all of them, then move on to the next thing. Maybe you've reached out to all of them two or three times then move on. I do not want you all walking away from this training confused or having analysis paralysis. Pick one or two and attack it. Hit every single contact in your city, your zip code, your county, whatever that falls underneath the category of accountant or attorney for divorces or attorney for evictions or attorney for probate, right? Go hit all of them. Hop into all their offices before you move on. This does not need to create analysis paralysis. The message is simple. I'm David. I buy houses. I love buying distressed houses. I pay cash and I close fast. I think we're all capable of saying those words. That's not hard. It's one sentence. That's the pitch. So don't overthink it. Keep it simple. I'm going to add this free training to real estate school. I am also going to add this too. The 50 plus ways to find motivated sellers module. So now there will be a comp, there will be a video in here accompanying this mind map and this training. Let's go ahead and open it up for a quick QA for all of those that are here today. Ro and Stella and Rick, welcome. And I see we have a couple comments. Is $500 your minimum for incentivizing amounts? What's the max you will pay for a lead? So usually I tell people $500 at a minimum. Because again, I don't want them to just, you know, not be incentivized. If it's a contractor that brings me a lead, you know, I might give them 300 or 400 because I'm not really specifically telling my contractors, you know, but either way, even if I were to give a contractor $500, it's, it's still a win because I get a deal. What's the max I'm going to pay? I've paid up to $2,500 as a bonus only because somebody brought me a home run deal that ended up making me like 40 grand. So don't get cheap. Right. If you pay somebody five hundred dollars and you go make forty grand, they're gonna still be happy you paid them five hundred dollars, but they might not be very happy, you know, that you didn't share a little bit more of the pie with them. So five hundred is a minimum, and I just tell people, hey, bring me a home run, I'll give you a thousand or two thousand even. But obviously, it needs to be a really, really good deal. So how much I pay is gonna be directly correlated to how much of a spread, you know, or a, I should say, how how big of a discount I'm able to buy the property for. But I always just tell people $500 minimum, no matter what, to bring me a deal. Now, this isn't bringing me a lead. This is bringing me a deal. So they may bring me a lead and it may not close for three or four months in some cases, but I'm still going to make sure they get credit for that because every time I bring somebody, or let, let me rephrase, every time somebody brings me a lead that I close and I pay them $500 or $1,000, they bring me more leads, no matter what. They're incentivized at that point. So keep that in mind. All right, Ro has a question here. How do I find out if bandit signs are legal in my area? Well, here's the deal. Most bandit signs are not legal in any area. And that's why they're called bandit signs. Some areas just prohibit them. Other areas will actually fine you. So that's why I like to use a Google voice number. And on that Google voice, voicemail, I don't typically answer those calls in real time, but sometimes we will. But on that Google voice, I just say, hey, I'm Dave. Thanks for calling. If you have a house you're looking to sell, give me your name, your number, and your address. I'm not typically leaving my business name. I'm not typically leaving a bunch of personal information. I'm going to make it hard for them to find me. If a code enforcement or a police officer does call me and they say, hey, you know, this is, this is not allowed, 
then I apologize and I'll offer to take them down or um, I'll just apologize. But I'm not typically giving out my personal information. If anybody asks what my business name is, I don't have a business when I'm using bandit signs. I'm Dave. I'm the business. All right. It's going to make it much harder for them to actually find you in the event that they are illegal. Um, but again, to answer your question, how do you find out? You call the local county, call the municipality that you live in and ask them if bandit signs are, 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 are a lead or illegal or, you know, what the repercussions are. They're most of the time they're going to sell you that tell you that they don't want them and they're not wanted, even if they're not illegal. Um, so yes, that's, if you want to call, go for it. Um, I've been using, I probably put out close to 5,000 bandit signs in my life, maybe more. And I think I've paid maybe $70 in fines total. So to me, even if it's illegal, the risk is worth the reward. I've probably bought in 30, 40, 50 houses from bandit signs, and I've paid $75 in fees on top of the cost of the signs. To me, the risk versus reward is there. Now, I'm not telling you all to go break the law. By all means, please don't take that away from this video. That's not my intent. That's not my MO. Um, but it's a great way to get leads. It's also a great way to sell houses too. If you're wholesaling, you can put blank bandit signs and write with marker on them, you know, around your property, you know, at every intersection in the quarter mile radius of your property, just saying, you know, three bedroom, two bath need to sell fast call. Again, Google voice can be your best friend when you're using bandit signs because it kind of hide, hides your identity a little bit. All right. Any more questions, guys? I got a couple more minutes, but, uh, Hopefully you all enjoyed the training. Do me a favor, drop a comment. And let me know if you learned a thing or two and if you appreciate the training or, or enjoyed it, I should say more so. I always like doing these trainings. I have fun. Uh, Rick says, David, I have been consuming your material like a hot knife through butter. Thanks for all you do. Awesome, Rick. I'm, I'm really happy to hear that, man. I really appreciate you. Stella says, yes, thank you. All right. Well, thank you guys. I appreciate you. And with that being said, let's go ahead and wrap it up. I'll add this into the free wholesale course, additional resources. I'll add it into the call replays as well. Um, let's see here. What else do we have this week? It's getting late in the week. It's already Thursday, isn't it? Looking at the calendar. We have a virtual RIA meeting on Sunday at 6 p.m. Central Time. I would love to see as many of you there as possible. Love to use that opportunity to get to know you guys. Um, so hopefully you've enjoyed this training. Have a great rest of your day. Oh, Rose says, very good. Definitely enjoyed it. Rick says, do you have time for a quick question? I do. I have one more quick question time. Go go ahead, Rick. Um, and Rose hey, says, by the way, what would you say about nursing home staff? Nursing home staff, you just got to get out there and network with those people. You got to you gotta meet the, it's not so much the staff, like the people that are doing nursing or cleaning or cooking. It's really more so the administrative office right? The administrator of the nursing home, the finance director. Um, these are the people that you're going to want to network with the, the placement agents specifically, also the office managers. Uh, go ahead, Rick, what you hey, got? I have been chasing some pre foreclosure leads. And, uh, for example, one of them owes like 160,000. The property is worth 350. It's going to auction in three weeks. And I can't get them to respond in any way, shape, or form. Go knock on the door. I did. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. I could hear the dog barking. And the guy says, shut the F up, you know, but then never comes to the door. Um, so I just put a, a little simple flyer under the door that says, uh, it appears you're having some trouble with the bank. I can help. Call me. Yeah, call me. Yeah. And if, you, if, you, and if they don't call, there's nothing you can do, right? You can only go so far. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, definitely leave some stuff on the door and maybe even put a door hanger on the door two or three different times. You know, yeah, I, mean, I had one you... a couple of weeks ago where I was actually able to get a hold of the ex-wife and she said, yeah, my husband's an idiot. Um, if you can get a hold of him, I'll sign whatever you need. There was about 250000 in equity and it actually wow. went for sale and sold on the courthouse steps. Unbelievable. He would not respond. Um, also, yeah, some people are just, you know, some people are embarrassed. Some people just have too much pride. You know, some people just aren't aware that they can get, that they can get, you know, some equity from an investor and other people just don't truly believe that their house is actually going to get taken from them and it happens every day. So yeah. all I can say is just be, be persistent. Okay. I don't, I don't necessarily want to use the word aggressive because some people may take that out of context. Right. But you got to be kind of aggressive in a way. Yeah, no. 
but don't be so aggressive that they're like gonna you know get a second or get a, a harassment you know case yeah no, I'm, pr- I'm pretty right? chill but the other one is i'm chasing some uh probate stuff and again one of them is a six hundred and fifty thousand dollar house he owes 385 he first got divorced then filed for bankruptcy then died oh geez oh wow so yeah are you, are you calling the heirs well, the heir has the been uh, in and out of prison uh, rap sheet as long as your arm, including murder, uh, in Oklahoma. I'm in California, but uh, send him a letter. Tell week. him you can tell him you can uh, fill his commissary account with thirty grand if you can buy the house. There you go. Okay. I mean, that's really the only thing. If he's going to be in there for life, the only thing that's going to matter to him is commissary, unless he has children. Then yeah. you can offer to pay his children or set up a, a trust account for some education for them or something. But either way, it's difficult to reach people in prison. You can try calling the prison and getting them on the phone, but your best bet is probably just to send a letter. And okay. You should be able to find out where he's located on the Department of Corrections website, all the inmates. It's, it's, it's public information. Okay. Yeah, I've just been having a real, hitting a real brick wall on both of these two different areas. Yeah, no, uh, you're doing, I mean, everything you're doing sounds great. Just be persistent with these people. And, uh, you know, whenever you're, um, whenever you're trying to reach that pre foreclosure guy, for example, maybe leave a note on the door that just says, if you call me, I might be able to put 30 grand in your pocket. That's all you need to say. Keep it simple, you know? Okay, cool. So, David, I appreciate you and all that you're doing. Thank you so much. Hey, you know, you guys have a rest of your day. Signing off. See you guys. House so easy, we close fast, and any time that works for you. Your house don't need it, we'll throw cash, it hits so fast, don't know what to do. Wanted her care to keep it, no declutter.